how's it going? So I'm here today to be doing a ranking of all the Christopher Nolan movies I've seen. Tenet just recently came out, and I figured this would be a good enough time to um, tell you guys my ranking of all of Christopher Nolan's uh, movies in video form. I have a list on Letterboxd, and that's just um, where my ranking has been all these years. But now that Tenet is out, I figured it would be the right time um, to make a substantial uh, Christopher Nolan uh, ranking video. I've seen all but three of Christopher Nolan's movies, Memento, Insomnia, and Following, but I've seen every other Christopher Nolan movie, and he is my favorite director. I think all but one of his movies are pure perfection, um, and really when it comes down to the ranking, it just comes down to enjoyment, because I just love all of his movies so much, um, and so it's, it's very hard to rank these, because, you know, I just love them all so much, but I do have a set ranking for them, and I can't wait to share that with you. Obviously, there are no honorable mentions for this ranking video, so we're just going to get right into the list. Even though this is Nolan's uh, shortest movie in terms of runtime, it still has incredible direction, great cinematography, and the same type of insanity that goes with pretty much every other Christopher Nolan movie. The score for this movie is also very good. I think this is one of Hans Zimmer's most underrated stories. Not a whole lot of people talk about it. And the final five minutes of this movie with the uh, Variation 15 track from the Dunkirk score, I suggest you guys go listen to that. But, you know, the score that plays at the end of the movie, very end of the movie, I think is one of the best scenes ever put to film. You know, you get that classic um, shot that everybody loves of the plane on fire with Tom Hardy just standing right there. I love those final five minutes. It's weird. Somehow, comic book movies got better than what we got with Batman Begins, which I think is so crazy. There's really only one word I can describe this movie, and that's epic. Batman Begins truly paved the way for how comic book movies are today, and I really can't thank this movie enough for it. Christian Bale has always been my favorite Batman Bruce Wayne, and he's exceptionally good in this movie. And Killian, I believe that's how you pronounce it, uh, Killian Murphy was also really great in this movie as the Scarecrow, but better yet, Ra's al Ghul, he was such an interesting villain to me. I love the bleak tone of the movie, and it has gotten so much better over the years for me. Now, if you saw my movie night vlog where I went to go see Tenet for the first time, uh, you guys know that I left that movie for the first time pretty confused with what was happening, not just with um, the inversion stuff in the movie, but also just with the story elements. But Nolan's latest film isn't his greatest yet, but aside from Star Wars and Avengers, Tenet has been the best experience I've had at the theaters. Right from the start, you're immediately hooked, and then right after that we get on with a great and truly one-of-a-kind espionage story. And I honestly really don't know how Christopher Nolan comes up with these crazy concepts. Like in Inception, we got like subconscious theft, Interstellar, we, there was talks about fifth dimensional beings, and now with Tenet, we have inversion, time moving backwards. I just think it's so crazy, and it's mind-blowing to me that he's able to come up with fascinating stories around these um, crazy and insane concepts. All the actors are super good in this movie, John David Washington especially. I really don't want to say much else just in case people haven't gone out to the theaters yet to see this movie, but the action scenes are insanely good. Even though Tenet was a bit hard, for me to follow at points, I really think this has potential to be one of Nolan's best films. This movie is just utterly insane. I've seen this movie probably over a dozen times now, and it still keeps me intrigued to this day. It's filled with fantastic performances and a story that's truly, truly one of a kind. The idea of planting and stealing ideas through a person's dreams is just such a unique idea, and it will never get old for me. When it comes to big comic book movies like Avengers Endgame and Avengers Infinity War, I would say The Dark Knight Rises is right up there with those two films. It's a very long movie, nearly three hours long, um, but so much happens during its long runtime. The entire city of Gotham being held hostage by Bane and his army just creates so much tension in the movie for me, and it's filled with fantastic cinematography, as well as one of Hans Zimmer's best stories. Christian Bale p plays a pretty broken Bruce Wayne and Batman in this movie, and seeing him in that pit, trying to get out of it, uh, was very interesting to watch. And I would say that Bane is not only one of the best comic book movie villains ever, 
I would say he's one of the best movie villains, just straight up, ever. I would even say he's right up there with Heath Ledger's Joker. The final act of this movie is also very good. It's filled with a lot of great character moments, as well as fa fantastic fight scenes, especially that one with, uh, you know, there's snow falling and we see the cops and Bane's army. Um, I love that scene. It's very epic. Also, that final shot of the movie, I think is pretty sick. This used to be my least favorite Christopher Nolan movie, but now it really is one of my favorites of his. Christian Bale is very good in this movie, but I would say the biggest performance in this movie uh, would have to go to Hugh Jackman, who gives a career best performance in my opinion. There's so much that makes me just truly love this movie. I love the old timey feel of it, you know, back in the 1800s when this movie takes place. I also love the conflict and constant dueling between Borden and Angier that happens throughout this entire movie. I think the story is super good too. Not a whole lot of people talk about it. In fact, I don't think I've ever heard anybody talk about the score, but it's a very good score for one of Christopher Nolan's movies. And I'm gonna be honest here, I've seen this movie several times now. I still don't 100% understand some of the things that happen throughout this movie, but I think that's just why I love the movie so much. It gives me something to look forward to whenever I watch the movie again. It just keeps getting better and better every time I'm picking up on new things. Hence why it's gone from my least favorite Christopher Nolan movie to being one of my favorites. I've also shown this to my friends a few times, and I always love seeing their reactions to things that happen throughout this movie. This is a movie I wish I could have watched in theaters. Uh, the first time I watched this movie was back on my old iPod Touch 4. Um on a website that had pirated movies and it was like 720p quality and even though it, that was not the best way at all to watch that movie for, for the first time I still absolutely fell in love with it. It's one of the biggest grandest movies ever made making it the modern day 2001 in my opinion. It's very lengthy you know again nearly three hours long but it's filled with many beautiful and mesmerizing sequences and Hans Zimmer's best score in my opinion not one of his best the best score of his. Matthew McConaughey also gives such a good performance as Coop. There's really no other movie like this, and whenever I watch it, I'm just in such a trance as to just how beautiful it is. I really can't say anything else that hasn't already been said about The Dark Knight. It is the greatest comic book movie ever made, and Heath Ledger as the Joker is one of the best performances ever put to screen. I also want to say that the final 10 minutes of this movie, I'm not going to spoil it for anybody who hasn't seen it yet, but those final 10 minutes are some of the most tense moments um, in any movie in my opinion. It really gives me the chills every time I watch those, and the final little monologue we get from Jim Gordon I think is a perfect way to end this movie. So there you have it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and let me know in the comments section what your guys' ranking is for uh, Christopher Nolan's movies. You can find me on social media. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd. All the links for those can be found in the description of this video. Thank you guys for watching once again, and I will see you guys next time. Mm -hmm.